You can read, so I'm not going to repeat the title. Server-side pagination has two main advantages over the regular implementation of pagination. First off, it's just easier. And secondly, all the relevant data is stored in the URL, which is super convenient because you can send that link to other people. You can save that link in a bookmark and when you go back to it, you will always get the exact same data. Whereas if you store it in state, you won't. And you'll be surprised at how easy server-side pagination is and how cool it is. So check this out. Let's first define our data. Normally this would come from our database, but this is just a bit easier to understand if we have it all in one file. We've got 10 entries right here as strings and that in an array. And the cool thing in Next.js is that for each page we automatically get past the search params. We can also get these client side which we need for server-side pagination. You'll see that later. But they also automatically get passed into every page as a type of string, string array or undefined. First off we need to know which page we are currently on. So let's get the page from the search params because that is where we are gonna pass them. But when we navigate to the page for the first time there is not going to be a search param, so we will default it to one and then the per page will be defaulted to five and in the same way originally gotten from the search params. You'll see that in action here in a second. Then we will define the start. This is mocked right now just from the data we have above. In a real world app you would skip and limit queries for a database. So you would skip the first you know five entries and then get like five more to show on the page. If we have the start we also need the end. That's going to be the start plus the number of per page. So this is going to be 0, 5 or 10 and this is going to be 5, 10 or 15. So we're going to display data from 0 to 5, from 5 to 10 and so on. And then lastly we want to define the entries. That is just a slice from the start to the end. So 0 to 5 and we're going to display that in our JSX. Let's apply a bit of styling so it doesn't look completely horrible and then display our entries by mapping over them and rendering out a p tag for each entry. Let's see what that looks like. Let's navigate to localhost and we can see there are five entries. So this would be our first page. And this is cool but we can do much better. Where's the controls? How do we navigate to the previous and next page? Well for that let's add a pagination controls component. I've defined that right here. And as you can see the logic is very very similar. This is a client component. You can see that at the very top of the file. And we will get to the has next page and has previous page here in a second. For now we need the router, the search params, which as I said earlier we can also get client side. And then the same logic for the page and per page applies right here where we get them from the search params or default them um, to the one or to the five that the same values as in the page.tsx. And then we are just displaying two buttons, one to go to the previous page, one to go to the next page and then we're also displaying which page we're on. Instead of talking you through this let me show you how this looks like. And whoa this kind of looks like a um, anyways, doesn't matter. Um, this is here for the example. So we can click the next page and we can see we can also go to the previous page. So how does this work? When I click the next page, you can see there are some query parameters added to our URL. This is very small, but it's a page equals two and per page equals five. And that is the data. When we put that into the router, just like this, as a template string page is equal to number page minus one, and then per page is, you know, five in our example, that will actually force the server component, the page.tsx to re-render right here and re-get the data. Now we have access to these two, the page and per page, and can display the split data accordingly. So the data will be sliced to the next five entries if we click on the next page button and we can navigate between pages very easily. And the very cool thing is if we share this link or paste it in a new tab, we are automatically on the correct page. That is one of the main benefits of this server-side pagination. When we send over the link or when we save that in a bookmark, we see the exact same data. Whereas if we save that in state, it will always start at the same point. That is really, really cool. And if there are large data operations involved, for example, you're getting a lot of data from the database or you're doing heavy calculations calculations, that is also very cool to do on the server. However, currently we can also go to page 3 out of 2. That's kind of weird. We can also go to page minus 1 out of 2. And fixing that is surprisingly easy. Let's start in our page and define something called the has next page and has previous page right here. And this is very simple. So we're just checking the has next page if the end is smaller than the data.length and for the has previous page if the start is greater than zero essentially. And we can receive these props in the pagination controls very easily just as boolean properties in here and then control whether the buttons are disabled or not. So we want to disable the previous page button if there is no 
has previous page, the boolean that we're passing down as a prop. And similarly, the same goes for the next page button if we don't have a next page. If we save that, you'll be able to see, let's reload the page without any query parameters, which will always make us start on the first page. And then as we navigate, we can see the next five entries, but the button is disabled. I cannot click it anymore, as easy as that. And same thing, of course, goes for the previous page. If we're displaying the first five entries, we shouldn't be able to go to the previous page. And of course, all this code will be available to you in the description in a GitHub gist if you want to implement it in your own way. Hey, thanks for watching the video. It means a lot. I really hope you enjoyed today's topic. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I just hope you learned something. I hope you found it interesting. And um, I'm going to see you in the next video. Have a good one and bye bye.